so amazing to have that wonderful uh, presentation that you gave me. Uh, what a great introduction. I'm like, oh, I'm down here in a little screen. Um, but uh, if you do check out my setup, if it does uh, happen to go full screen, um, Karan and Anisha did mention I'm a bit of a streamer, so there's some cool things in the background. I also loved Anisha's little heart, uh, which was so cool. So thank you, Anisha, uh, for the heart. Um, and thank you both for that fantastic introduction. It was, it was really cool and it was so fun. Um, hosting Universe last year, and I'm really excited to be back this time, uh, giving you a talk for Satellite on how to GitHub like boss. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Um, so as Karan mentioned, I am the Hackathon Queen, or known as the Hackathon Queen, and both Karan and Anisha did such an amazing job of introducing me and talking about what I do. So I'm gonna leave most of that there, but they did say, I am GitHub, I'm on the developer relations team with Karan and Anisha, and we get to have so much amazing fun and do awesome talks like this to awesome people like you who are all listening in. So thanks so much for being here. As I mentioned, my talk is called GitHub Like a Boss, and it's basically a whole bunch of top tips on using GitHub, making it work really well for you, and how to make GitHub amazing. Now, it's already really cool, so here's how to do it. Now, we could be here for hours talking about top tips on how to use GitHub, navigate it, make it work better for you, but we've only got 20 minutes. So what I've done is I've broken up these top tips into four parts. So the first one is personalization. We've talked about how you can make GitHub work a little bit better for you. Next one is collaboration, how to work really well with GitHub for your team, whether that's a developer focused or developer specific team, or even how to work with non-developers as well. We're going to talk about a little bit about the way you work and how to use GitHub in the various different forms for your work. And then obviously this is the open source channel. So we are going to be talking about some top tips on using GitHub for open source. Now, I mentioned we've only got 20 minutes. Um, so there's a lot more top tips than here. So if there's a top tip that you really want to hear, make sure you put it in the discussions and I'll try and answer at the end. All right. So personalization. Personalization is something that people love. Think about when you create a social media profile for the first time. People love to personalize it. You know, they add a photo, you might add where you're from, you might add a few different things about yourself. Even when you're building Lego, lots of people like to personalize the way they do this. I'm a big fan of Lego, um, so I had to throw some Lego into this talk somewhere. Um, but like you can customize a Lego model or you can customize a social media profile, you can customize GitHub too. Now, one of the first ways you can do this, or just one way you can do this, um, is our profile reviews. Now, this is something that is relatively new. We launched it last year, and it's a really fun way for you to customize and showcase who you are and what you do on GitHub. So you can add things like a little bio about yourself. You can add some of the top projects that you're working on, or like our good friend, B Dougie, who also works on the developer relations team. You can showcase other really cool developers. So here's his top eight developers that he put on his bio. Now, the profile readme is really a sky's the limit kind of choose your own adventure. You can do anything you want on your profile readme. And it's really, really easy to set up. So the way to set it up is if you head to your GitHub profile, open up a repository with the same name as your username. When you do this, you'll get like a little pop-up here saying, this is a special repository. You've now found a way to make a profile readme. So that's how you create it. And then you can add anything you want into it. So really make it yourself. This is another really cool profile from one of our GitHub stars, and she's added this really cool banner up on top um, and a little bit about her. Now, you might have noticed from both B Dougie's profile and Monica's profile that there are like animations and GIFs. Now, because your profile readme is written completely in Markdown, you can add anything you want that would be considered in Markdown. So you can add GIFs, you can add images, uh, you can add some video, you can add emojis like here, or you can even add games. Now, this is the profile readme from one of our hubbers, Tim, and he's had this community chess tournament happening on his profile readme for a while now. So he's got this all running with GitHub Actions, and you open up an issue, which we'll talk about a bit more in a minute, uh, but you open up and you can play this community chess tournament literally on his profile. 
So if you go to his profile, you'll be able to see this. So I'll let you find that one. So if you uh, have a look for Tim Vogel on GitHub, you might find it. Now, another way to customize GitHub to work really well for you is to start looking at and checking out notifications. Now, notifications, if you've used any kind of uh, platform before, whether it's emails or obviously if you've been using GitHub for a while, you'll notice really quickly that you'll get a lot of notifications. Every time someone comments on an issue, mentions you, talks about you, uh, makes a pull request, you'll get a notification. So this can sometimes be really overwhelming and you can get a lot of notifications. So one way to personalize GitHub and make it work better for you is to start personalizing some of these notifications. So just recently, we released a new way for you to filter notifications. So you can now filter out notifications by organization or author. So for example, as Karan and Anisha mentioned, I work for GitHub, right? Which means I'm part of the GitHub org. Now, because I do a few other things on GitHub, I also have a few other orgs that I'm part of. Now, when I'm working during my work day, I don't want notifications from all these other orgs. I only want the notifications from GitHub so I know what I'm working on. So I can go through my notifications and filter out those notifications by GitHub. Now, you can get to notifications from almost anywhere on your computer or on your GitHub profile on GitHub. All you do is click the bell up in the top right there. Um, so if you, you can get that from your repo, from issues, from your profile. Now, one thing to note with notifications that some people get a little bit worried, like, oh my gosh, I haven't checked out my notifications for a while. If I go now and check them out, there's going to be hundreds of thousands of notifications and I don't want to have to deal with that. So if you haven't checked out your notifications in a while, go to notifications and you'll get a pop-up and this will help you filter out all those notifications that you've got sitting in the backlog. Again, this is something new that we launched because we thought that, oh, you know, there's lots of people that are not going and checking out their notifications all the time. What if we give people a way that if they haven't visited their notifications for a while, we'll help you clean those up. So don't get scared about going and checking out your notifications if you haven't seen them for a while. Uh, now, what else plays into notifications is reminders. So if you, uh, part of a lot of organizations and you're getting a lot of reminder or sorry notifications on GitHub, you might think, oh, I might actually miss a really important notification. I might miss a task. I might miss a milestone. So how do I schedule a reminder or how do I schedule notification reminders? You can do that in GitHub. You can actually connect your Slack to your GitHub and you can receive reminders in Slack. Not only that, but you can choose which organizations you receive reminders for. Now, obviously, I mentioned um, I work for GitHub, so on my GitHub Slack channel, I only want to receive reminder notifications on Slack from GitHub, not from all the other orgs that I'm part of. So you can easily do that. And all you do is go to your settings and scroll down to your scheduled reminders, and you'll be able to do, uh, check out your reminders there and customize that a little bit. So if you have a look here, you can check it out. You can customize it, you can make it specific for each organization and really personalize it for your type of experience. Um, so go and check that out. Now, speaking of personalizing your experience, you probably would have noticed uh, my last few slides have all been quite bright and white and in your face. And you're probably like, well, this nice dark background, but the rest of it's really white and bright. So something that we launched um, that our users were really asking for and something that we launched at Universe last year, and if you've been on social media, you probably would have seen it, is our GitHub dark mode. Now, this has been really, really exciting. People have been absolutely loving this mode. This mode is now available on github.com. It's completely native. It's available across all our GitHub suite of um, products. So go and check out dark mode. Now, it's really easy to check out dark mode. If you're on your profile, you'll see a, a little switch button or a little toggle up the top of your profile, and you'll be able to switch to dark mode. We also have a new dim mode, which just got released and announced last week. So if you haven't checked out um, dim mode, you might want to go check that out. It's a slightly different contrast, um, like less, less dark, so um, like different contrasts you can see there. So we've now got a light mode, a dark mode, and a dim mode. Uh, but I really like the dark mode. It really helps save your eyes. Um, you can see this nice, beautiful darkness here. So uh, to save our eyes for the rest of my presentation, we're going to be using GitHub in dark mode. So let's jump in. 
So one of the things people love about using GitHub is the type of collaboration you can do on GitHub. Now, if you've been using GitHub as a developer, you'll probably know about a lot of our collaboration tools like uh, code review and merging and things like that. Now, since a lot of people know about those, I thought we'd talk about a few of the tools that we have as GitHub to collaborate, which you might not necessarily know about. These are also really good ways to collaborate across your entire organization. And the first one, which is one of my personal favorites, is project boards. Project boards are really great for tracking the overall progress of a particular project. You can also use it for a variety of different reasons though. So this one here is our GitHub roadmap. This is our public roadmap. Again, something uh, we launched last year out to the community. And you can easily see at a glance what we're releasing and when. So across the top of our project boards, we've got each quarter that's uh, coming up and the different features and products that we're releasing across that quarter. Each one is an issue, so you can click on that and go and see more happening on the project board. Now, this is a really good way to collaborate with non-developers because non-developers are often familiar with this project board type setup. There's lots of different ways to use project boards too. Like we've obviously used it here as a roadmap, but I've spoken to open source maintainers who use it to track different um, events that they've got coming up. I even use project boards myself personally. I have my own personal Mish list project board and it's got things like my shopping list and holidays that I want to go on and other tasks that I might want to track or projects I might be interested in. So project boards are really up to you and you can customize it and really personalize it for you and the way that you want to use it. Now, another really good way to collaborate with people is our discussions. You're obviously going to be getting a first taste of discussions or first-hand taste of discussions if you're heading over to discussions during this talk or afterwards. But it's a really great way to communicate, chat, collaborate, and have a discussion on GitHub. So if you've been using GitHub as a developer for a while, you probably know that those there's those issues that you had that aren't really issues, they're more like discussions. So now we want to separate discussions from issues. We really wanted issues to be a way for you to talk about new features, new products and bug fixes and things like that and then have discussions as a way for you to chat and collaborate. Now you can use discussions for a variety of different things. You can see across the, um, the side column there you can use them for ideas, Q&As. Again I've chatted to some project maintainers asking them what they what they use discussions for. Some of them said they even use discussions for people within the org to share their favorite holiday or surfing destination. I was like, that's really cool. Um, but often you can have these types of discussions and really separate them from your issues. Now, if you ever notice that an issue that you've opened or someone else has opened is becoming more of a discussion or a chat or a collaboration instead of an issue, you can easily go and convert that issue into a discussion. So here, I opened up an issue to talk about a logo. I was like, ah, I think we should get a new logo. Um, let's see what we're gonna do, who we're gonna get. Uh, and it became too much of a discussion. So I quickly went in and said, yep, let's convert this to a discussion. Um, and now, as you can see with our discussion, we can have thread of replies, we can have forum style conversations, and we can keep all the chat and discussion happening over here and separate it out from our issues. Now, speaking of separating things and the way that people work now, uh, we really wanted developers and we ourselves as um, people who use GitHub and as developers, we like to work the way that we want to. And at GitHub, we want to give you that same power. We want you to use GitHub the way that you want to use it. Um, and so because of that, we decided that we'd provide GitHub in a number of different formats, a number of different platforms, and another, uh, a number of different ways that you can use and engage with GitHub. So one of those is GitHub for mobile. This allows you to take GitHub with you everywhere you go. Now, obviously, not many people are traveling at the moment, but when you do travel again, uh, you'll be able to take GitHub with you everywhere in your pocket. It's available on iOS and Android, and you can do so much on mobile. You can quickly comment on an issue, review bug fixes, merge code. And now, as of uh, probably about a month ago or so now, um, you can even have discussions on mobile as well. Uh, so the latest version was released last week for mobile and even includes release notes for GitHub now. So make sure you go check those out. 
One of the things I love about mobile is being able to quickly do something on the fly. For example, um, if an issue gets open by my team and it's, you know, 7 p.m. my time on a Friday, I don't want to completely block them over the weekend. I can just quickly comment on an issue and quickly unblock them without having to go to my computer, fire up GitHub and go from there. So that's why I love mobile. It's really fun. Another one of my personal favorites, which some people have been loving too, is GitHub Desktop. Now, I really like GitHub Desktop. It's available on Windows and Mac OS, and it's a really good way to organize your repos. So all you do is drag and drop a repo into GitHub Desktop, and then you can manage that repo from there. What GitHub Desktop does is it compares the repo that you've got on your local machine to the version in the cloud. Um, and me being not so familiar or remembering different commands to fix GitHub or, you know, have I merged my thing yet? You know, is it, Am I one step behind master on my computer or main, sorry? Um, am I behind main on my computer? Is my origin in front of my local copy? GitHub Desktop manages all that for me. So I love these big blue buttons that come up like, oh, you are one commit behind main. Would you like to pull in the origin and make your local machine uh, pair up with what's on the cloud? So that's why I really love Desktop. You know, it's got all these nice big blue buttons and toggle and push commands. I don't have to really think about what I need to do next. Um, so I love GitHub Desktop. And as you can see here, it's available in dark mode as well. Other thing with GitHub Desktop is you can go through the history of all your files and compare and view the changes. So you can see in red, it's been deleted. And in green, they're the added versions. So the latest version of GitHub Desktop shipped on March 10th. So make sure you're up to date with GitHub Desktop to um, enjoy all the fancy features we have. Now, if mobile and desktop aren't your cup of teas, maybe you'll like our CLI. So last year we launched the GitHub CLI and developers have been loving our CLI, being able to use and seamlessly work in one window. So GitHub CLI allows you to do so many different things. You can create, view, and edit issues directly from the CLI. You can check out PRs. You can now auto merge PRs, which is a new feature for our CLI that was released a few weeks ago. You can easily clone a repo. You can manage SSH keys and so much more. CLI has been really fun. Even I've been loving using it. It's available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Also, fun fact about GitHub CLI is it's open source and you can contribute to it as well. So speaking of open source, as I mentioned, we're on the open source channel. So I'm going to give you a few top tips on getting involved in open source and working in open source. So first one is getting involved in open source. Now, if you're sitting there, some people think, oh, you know, how do I get involved? How do I find projects? You know, one tip that um, is one of my top tips, but was also shared yesterday during one of our satellite panels is um, contributing to projects that you might already use. For example, I am currently using OBS to run this presentation. OBS is an open source project. So if you use OBS, that's a really good way. You can go in and um, jump in and, um, and start contributing to OBS. You can also find really good projects to contribute to through events like Hacktoberfest. But what about all the other times of the year or if you're stuck for what you're currently using, or if you just want something completely new, you can go and check out trending topics on GitHub. This is a really fun way to find out what's currently trending on GitHub. It's also a great way to search by type, by language type, both written and spoken language. So if you go, I'm a Python developer, I want to go and search our top projects that are trending on GitHub in Python and start contributing to that. Now, once you've found a project you think you might be interested in, have a look at their readme profile. If a project is really good, it'll have a good readme. Now, as the name um, suggests, read this. Does it make sense? Does it excite you? Does it entice you? It'll have a really good explanation of what the project does and how it works. And if this resonates with you and you might think you might want to contribute, the next thing to do is look at the contribution guidelines. Again, if it's a good project, it'll have really good contribution guidelines that tell you how to contribute to the project and how to get involved in starting to contribute. Again, does it resonate with you? Does it sound like a community you want to be a part of? If so, then go and check out their issues and have a look at these labels called good first issues. These have been identified by maintainers as good ways to get involved in GitHub 
and well, sorry, within the project itself. And it's identified as an issue that's, been, that's relatively easy to solve and will give you a good understanding of the project that you're starting to contribute to. So that pretty much brings us to time. So if there's more things that you want to learn about GitHub, um, you're sitting here thinking, I actually don't know how to open up an issue, or I heard her mention actions, I want to learn more about actions. You can go and jump on the learning lab. This has everything you need to get started with GitHub if you're coming to GitHub for the first time, everything from opening an issue or right up to our advanced stuff, like working with actions or deploying GitHub pages. So go and check out the learning lab. If you want more top tips like on specific things like keyboard shortcuts or cool things that we've got coming up, go and follow GitHub on Twitter. We're putting out these really short social media videos on top tips that you might be interested in and you can go and check them out. So go follow us on uh, Twitter. Again, if you want to uh, engage with me or interact with me or ask me questions, I'm pretty much available on every social media platform known to man, or I'm going to be in the discussions right after this. So come and check to me in discussions. So without further ado, let's hear from some of the questions that are coming through GitHub discussions at the moment. Thank you. Hey, Mish. Hey, Mish. Hi, you hey. both going? Hello. Hello. Oh, so excited to be back. <laughs> awesome. It's that is really great, you know, of GitHub like a boss. Uh, you know, some of some of those many tips are those that even many of us might not be aware of. So I'm sure that's, you know, that's going to be helpful for most of you out there. So if you have any questions, even right now, you can drop them over in GitHub discussions and we will take up some of them live out here for Mish. But otherwise you can always hang around on uh, discussions as well. So I know there are, you know, a few questions that have come in. Um, Mish, you know, someone wants to know what is, what is, uh, what are some of the things you use every day at GitHub that, you know, you really like? Yeah, um, actually all the things that I talked about in my presentation, I use pretty much every single day at GitHub. Um, if you see me, you mentioned I do live streaming on Twitch. So I also do live coding on Twitch. And if you've ever seen me do any live coding on Twitch, I use the CLI desktop and um, you know even code spaces and things. So I use all the things I talked about. I actually use pretty much every single day. Um, there's also some fancy new things coming up that I've even had a, um, had a chance to have a look at. So um, I use all the whole GitHub suite pretty much every single day and it's so fun. I love desktop. Um, I love using the CLI. It's new and it's exciting and they're always adding in new commands. So using the CLI is really fun. Um, and project boards are a really fun way to collaborate with everyone across the team. You know, both of you know that we use it um, as part of our DevRel team as well. So yeah, I get to use all the cool things on GitHub every single day. <laughs> <laughs> so Mish, we know that you definitely GitHub like a boss, but what's the one biggest top tip on getting started with GitHub? Um, okay, getting started, especially if you're like new to GitHub or you've been maybe even using GitHub for a while and you're looking for the next big thing, is whenever I'm using GitHub or even just generally using the internet, I nearly always come across um, GitHub repos. And my biggest tip is just go and start them. Like just start everything on GitHub. Um, for example, I recently got into um, cryptocurrency mining um, and I found or like the, the tool that I use to mine crypto. Again, website there, scroll down. Oh, cool, I got some social media channels. Oh, wow, their repo is all ho hosted on GitHub. So I immediately went to the repo, started the repo and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna have a look around at the readme files and check out the project. Um, I found a bug with the um, like with the software, so I opened up an issue. I even found the fix for it, so I like, put it in the issue. Nice. So I think that's my top tip is like when you're browsing and you're surfing the internet, you find really good little pieces of like programs or things that you might use. Have a look at where it's actually hosted. Most of the time they're hosted on GitHub, and I just go and star them um, so I can go and find them um, for future. But also like it's just really cool to see that all the things that I get to use every day and just, just host it on GitHub, which is awesome. <laughs> Wow, that's that's absolutely you know just 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 go and start them and then have them have them ready out over there. So, um, Mish, you know I know I know you kind of uh, interact with a lot of the developers and keep talking to them. Uh, was there was there one tip that you know you felt that 
oh my god you know even the power users are not aware of this is is there something like that there there is one and it came out recently um in a top tip video that i did um but i decided to do the top tip video because i showed it live on stream so if you do ever come into my streams you get some really cool insights on what the top tip videos are going to be but i showed this thing on stream and it was really um good timing so most of you will know if you've been um surfing around social media you would have seen the github skyline stuff that we announced mm -hmm. which is a way for you to go in and get a 3d version or 3d image of your contribution graph and I was like this is really cool I can like download a 3d image and stuff and then someone mentioned to me like you know that you can view and host 3d files on github so I even like printed out mine so this is my 2020 um one here and I was like Ooh, showing nice. this on stream I was like we did this and I was like oh but if you want to see it and put it on github you can store the 3d file for this on github and so i put the file on and you can spin it and turn it and use it and play with it on github and i was like that's really cool and my whole audience was just sitting there like this is really awesome and i was like it gets better guys check this out so i put my 2019 but it was my 2020 graph i put it against my 2019 graph i put it on github and you can actually see the difference on github so if you're using wow. code review and things like that you know that the additions are in green and deletions are in red. So if you have a 3D file on GitHub and you add a new version of the file, you can see the changes that are made to that file in 3D. And it was like, it was like, it was just so that's cool. Pretty amazing. And I think that's like one of the biggest things that even power users don't necessarily know. And I think it's because like we were so ahead of the times when we released that feature. So that feature was released back in 2013. And at the time, not many people were getting into 3D printing and tinkering and stuff like that. And, and now it's just become so much bigger. So I think we'll see a lot more people start to use um, GitHub for their 3D version control, which I'm really excited to see more of that. Perfect. Great. Well, thanks, Mish, for sharing everything that you shared with us and the rest of the world, actually. This session was definitely hot, hot. So I if you miss job. it, you can always watch this on demand. <laughs> I love those emojis. They're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and folks, don't forget, head on over to GitHub Discussions as well. Mish is going to be hanging out there for the next 30 minutes. So you can post any more questions that you have on your mind because Mish is going to be there. Oh, there you go. There's the link right there. Um, so thanks again, Mish, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much for having me. I'll see you all in discussion. Good luck for the rest of it. Bye. Bye.